Welcome back to Animal Facts, here we give you nothing but absolute facts so believe it. In this video, we'll unveil the top 10 blood-sucking animals that haunt the animal kingdom. From tiny terrors to formidable foes, these creatures have evolved unique ways to quench their thirst for blood. So let's discover the dark and sometimes surprising world of these blood-sucking creatures, and learn how they've adapted to their unusual lifestyles and the ecological roles they play. But beware, for some of them pose a real threat to humans and animals alike. Many thanks to all our subscribers, without your continued support we wouldn't be here today. New viewers we welcome you so please don't forget to leave and comment on today's video. With that said it's bloodsucking time, so let the countdown begin. Kicking off today's list we lampreys. Lampreys are often referred to as blood suckers because some species of lampreys are parasitic and feed on the blood and bodily fluids of other fish. Not all lampreys are parasitic, some are non-parasitic and feed on detritus or microorganisms. However, parasitic lampreys are the ones commonly associated with the term blood sucker. Parasitic lampreys have a specialized, toothed, funnel-shaped mouth that they use to attach themselves to the bodies of other fish. They use a circular, suction-like motion to create a seal against the host fish's body. Once attached, the lamprey uses its sharp teeth to pierce the host's skin and scales. It then feeds on the host's blood and bodily fluids. Lampreys have a rasping tongue covered in sharp, keratinized teeth that they use to scrape away tissue and access the blood vessels. Lampreys can cause harm to their host fish, as their feeding can create open wounds that may become infected. This parasitic relationship can be detrimental to the host fish, especially if they are heavily infested. Lampreys have complex life cycles that involve metamorphosis. After spending a portion of their lives as filter-feeding larvae, parasitic lampreys undergo a transformation into adult parasites capable of blood feeding. Taking the ninth place we have vampire bats. Vampire bats are one of the few species of bats that feed on blood, and they are sometimes referred to as blood suckers. There are three species of vampire bats, the common vampire bat Desmodus rotundus, the hairy-legged vampire bat Diphila ecodata, and the white-winged vampire bat Dianus youngi. Vampire bats are nocturnal creatures that feed primarily on the blood of other animals. They are highly specialized for this diet. Common vampire bats typically feed on the blood of mammals, such as cattle, horses, goats and sometimes even humans. Hairy-legged vampire bats primarily feed on the blood of birds, while white-winged vampire bats may feed on both mammals and birds, vampire bats approach their host stealthily while it sleeps. They are known for their agility in flight and their ability to land on their host without waking it. When they make a small incision with their sharp teeth, vampire bats release an anticoagulant enzyme in their saliva. This enzyme prevents the host's blood from clotting, allowing the bat to feed continuously. Vampire bats use their tongue, which has specialized grooves for lapping, to drink the blood. They lap up the blood much like a cat drinks milk. Vampire bats do not consume large quantities of blood during each feeding. They typically take only a small amount, about 1 to 2 tablespoons, and this feeding process may last for about 20 to 30 minutes. Vampire bats are social animals and often share their blood meals with other members of their colony. If a bat is unsuccessful in obtaining a meal, a roost mate may regurgitate some of its blood to share. While the idea of vampire bats may evoke fear due to their blood-feeding behavior, it's important to note that they are typically not a significant threat to humans. However, they can transmit diseases to livestock, and their feeding habits have led to economic concerns in areas where they feed on domestic animals. Taking the eighth spot we have sand flies. Sand flies are small, blood-feeding insects belonging to the family Psychodidae. They are known for their painful bites and are sometimes referred to as sand fleas, although they are not true fleas. Only the female sand flies are blood feeders. They require a blood meal to develop their eggs. Male sand flies primarily feed on nectar and other plant juices. When a female sand fly bites, it pierces the skin with its specialized mouthparts to access a blood vessel. The bite can be painful, and the saliva of the sand fly contains enzymes that can cause itching and swelling in humans. Sand flies are notorious for transmitting diseases to humans and animals. They are vectors for diseases such as leishmaniasis, a group of parasitic diseases caused by protozoa of the genus Leishmania. 
leishmaniasis can have various clinical forms, including cutaneous, mucocutaneous, and visceral forms, depending on the species of leishmania involved. Preventing sand fly bites is essential in areas where they are prevalent and where diseases like leishmaniasis are a concern. Strategies for prevention include using insect repellents, wearing protective clothing, and using bed nets treated with insecticides. It's important to note that sand flies are not the same as the larger blood-feeding insects like mosquitoes, but their bites can be quite bothersome and in some cases, pose a serious health risk due to the diseases they transmit. Coming up next we have horse flies. Horse flies are blood-feeding insects known for their painful bites. When they bite, they use their scissor-like mouthparts to cut the skin, and then they feed on the blood that flows from the wound. The bite is typically painful, and it can leave a raised, itchy, and sometimes swollen mark on the skin. Female horse flies are the blood feeders, and they require a blood meal to develop their eggs. They are attracted to warm-blooded animals, including horses, cattle, deer, and humans. Horse flies locate their hosts by detecting factors like body heat, movement, and the scent of exhaled carbon dioxide. When a female horse fly lands on a host, she uses her scissor-like mouthparts to lacerate the skin and create a small, bleeding wound. She then feeds on the oozing blood. Horse flies are equipped with anticoagulant saliva, which helps prevent the host's blood from clotting during feeding, allowing them to feed more efficiently. While horse flies are primarily known for their painful bites, they can also play a role in disease transmission. They are potential vectors for diseases such as tularemia and anthrax, although disease transmission by horse flies is relatively rare compared to other insect vectors like mosquitoes and ticks. Protecting oneself and animals from horse fly bites can involve wearing protective clothing, using insect repellents, and employing physical barriers, such as screens or fly masks for animals. Next up we have kissing bugs. Kissing bugs, also known as triatomine bugs or assassin bugs, or blood-feeding insects that belong to the family Regiviidae. They are known as kissing bugs because of their tendency to bite humans, often near the face, while they sleep. These bugs feed on the blood of mammals, including humans, birds, and other animals. Kissing bugs are typically active at night. They locate a host by detecting the carbon dioxide and body heat emitted by warm-blooded animals. When they find a suitable host, they often bite around the mouth, eyes, or other exposed areas of the face. The bite of a kissing bug can be painful and may cause itching, redness, and swelling at the site. However, not everyone who is bitten by a kissing bug will have a noticeable reaction. Kissing bugs are of concern because they can transmit a parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi, which causes Chagas disease. Chagas disease is a serious and potentially life-threatening illness that affects millions of people in Central and South America. It can lead to heart and gastrointestinal problems if left untreated. After feeding, kissing bugs often defecate near the bite site. If the bug is infected with the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite, its feces can contain the parasite. If the infected feces come into contact with the bite wound or mucous membranes, such as the eyes, nose, or mouth, it can lead to transmission of the parasite to the host. Kissing bugs are primarily found in the Americas, ranging from the southern United States to Argentina. They often inhabit areas near human dwellings, including cracks in walls, thatched roofs, and outdoor hiding spots. To reduce the risk of kissing bug bites and Chagas disease transmission, it's important to take measures such as repairing cracks in walls, using bed nets, and applying insect repellent. In regions where Chagas disease is prevalent, efforts are made to control the insect vector and improve housing conditions. I see you are watching but haven't hit that like or subscribe button. If you could take the time out to show a little support, we would greatly appreciate it. Now then taking fifth place we have leeches. Leeches are indeed blood-sucking parasites, and they are part of a group of segmented worms known as annelids. While leeches are often associated with blood-sucking, it's important to note that not all leech species feed on blood, and some have different diets. Some leech species are hematophagous, which means they feed on the blood of vertebrate animals, including humans. They have specialized adaptations for this mode of feeding. Blood-feeding leeches have a unique mouth structure that includes a muscular sucker at the front end of their body. This sucker contains sharp teeth that the leech uses to make small incisions in the skin of their host. 
They then secrete anticoagulants to prevent the host's blood from clotting while they feed. Many blood-feeding leeches also produce natural anesthetics in their saliva, which numbs the host's skin during feeding. This makes their feeding process less noticeable to the host. Blood-feeding leeches can consume a blood meal several times their body weight. After feeding, they detach from their host and may not feed again for weeks or months, depending on the species. Blood-feeding leeches are often found in freshwater environments like ponds, lakes, and slow-moving streams. They attach themselves to passing animals, including birds, amphibians, and mammals. Interestingly, leeches have been used for medical purposes in a practice known as leech therapy or hirudotherapy. Medical leeches are carefully applied to patients to help with blood circulation and reduce swelling, particularly in cases like reattachment surgeries or to treat certain medical conditions. It's essential to distinguish between blood-feeding leeches and other non-bloodsucking leech species. While some people may find leeches unpleasant due to their feeding habits, they are part of the natural ecosystem and have been used beneficially in various medical contexts. Additionally, not all leeches pose a risk to humans, as only specific species are adapted for blood feeding. Coming up next we have bedbugs. Bedbugs are indeed blood-sucking insects. They are small, wingless insects that feed on the blood of humans and other warm-blooded animals, such as mammals and birds. Bedbugs are hematophagous, which means they exclusively feed on blood. They use specialized mouthparts, called a proboscis or beak, to pierce the skin of their host and access their blood vessels. While feeding, they inject anticoagulants and anesthetics to prevent the host from feeling the bite and to facilitate blood flow. Bedbugs are primarily nocturnal, preferring to feed at night when their hosts are asleep and less likely to disturb them. They are attracted to the heat and carbon dioxide emitted by sleeping humans, which helps them locate their hosts. During the day, bedbugs typically hide in cracks and crevices near their feeding source, often in or around beds, mattresses, and furniture. They reproduce rapidly, with female bedbugs laying hundreds of eggs during their lifetime. Bedbug bites are usually painless at first due to the anesthetic they inject, but they can later become itchy and swollen. The bites are often arranged in a linear or clustered pattern on the skin. While bedbugs are not known to transmit diseases directly to humans, their bites can cause discomfort, itching, and potential secondary skin infections from scratching. In some cases, individuals may experience allergic reactions to bedbug bites. Bedbug infestations can be challenging to eradicate. Professional pest control services are often needed to effectively treat infested areas. Prevention measures include regular inspection of sleeping and resting areas, using protective mattress covers, and avoiding secondhand furniture of unknown origin. Kicking off the top three we have fleas. Fleas are blood-feeding parasites, and they are known for their ability to feed on the blood of various warm-blooded animals, including mammals and birds. Fleas have specialized mouthparts adapted for piercing and feeding on blood. Their mouthparts consist of a needle-like structure called a proboscis, which they use to pierce the skin of their host. To facilitate blood feeding, fleas inject saliva into the host's skin while they feed. Flea saliva contains chemicals that help prevent the host's blood from clotting. This anticoagulant property ensures that the blood remains in a liquid state, making it easier for the flea to feed. Fleas use their piercing mouthparts to access a blood vessel beneath the host's skin. They then feed by sucking up the host's blood. Fleas can consume large quantities of blood relative to their body size. Blood feeding is essential for the reproduction of fleas. Female fleas require a blood meal to produce eggs, and the nutrients obtained from the blood are crucial for the development of their offspring. Fleas are highly specialized when it comes to selecting hosts. Different species of fleas tend to prefer specific host animals, although they can infest a wide range of hosts in some cases. For example, the cat flea primarily infests cats but can also bite dogs and humans. Taking second place we have ticks. Ticks are indeed blood-feeding ectoparasites, meaning they live on the outside of their hosts and feed on their blood. They are arachnids, closely related to spiders and scorpions, and are well adapted for blood feeding. Ticks have specialized mouthparts that are adapted for piercing the skin of their host and accessing blood vessels. These mouthparts include a pair of cutting chelicerae and a central hypostome, 
which has backward-facing barbs or hooks that help anchor the ticks in place once it has attached to its host. Ticks use their mouthparts to pierce the skin of their host, and they secrete a cement-like substance to anchor themselves firmly. This attachment is quite strong and can be challenging to remove without proper technique. Once attached, ticks feed by cutting into a blood vessel and feeding on the host's blood. They use their specialized mouthparts to create a small feeding tube, through which they can extract blood. As they feed, they may also inject substances into the host's bloodstream to prevent clotting and inflammation. Ticks can feed for extended periods, and their bodies become visibly engorged as they fill with blood. The duration of feeding depends on the tick species and its life stage but can range from several minutes to several days. Ticks are vectors for various diseases, and they can transmit pathogens like bacteria, viruses, and parasites to their hosts during the feeding process. Some well-known diseases transmitted by ticks include Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and anaplasmosis. Ticks have a wide host range, including mammals, birds, and sometimes even reptiles and amphibians. Different tick species have specific host preferences, but many are opportunistic feeders and will attach to whatever host they encounter. It's important to note that not all ticks are harmful, and not all ticks' bites result in disease transmission. However, tick-borne diseases can be serious, so it's crucial to take precautions when in tick-prone areas and to check for ticks and promptly remove them if you have been outdoors. Additionally, consult a healthcare professional if you develop symptoms after a tick's bite, such as fever, rash, or flu-like symptoms, as early treatment can be important in preventing certain tick-borne illnesses. Taking first place on today's list we have mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are blood-sucking insects and they are well known for their habit of feeding on the blood of animals, including humans. Female mosquitoes are the bloodsuckers, while males typically feed on nectar and other sugary substances. Female mosquitoes have specialized mouthparts called proboscises, which they use to pierce the skin of their host and access their blood vessels. When a female mosquito lands on a host, she uses her proboscis to probe for a suitable blood vessel. Once she finds one, she pierces the skin with her sharp, needle-like mouthparts. Mosquito saliva, which contains anticoagulants and enzymes, is injected into the host's skin to prevent blood clotting and facilitate feeding. As the mosquito feeds, she sucks up blood from the host's blood vessels. Mosquitoes are equipped with a pumping mechanism that allows them to ingest a blood meal quickly. The mosquito's saliva can cause an itching sensation and can trigger allergic reactions in some individuals. The itching is a result of the body's immune response to the mosquito's saliva. Mosquitoes are notorious for their role as vectors of various diseases, including malaria, dengue fever, Zika virus, and West Nile virus. When they feed on an infected host, they can pick up the pathogens and transmit them to other hosts when they bite again. It's important to note that not all mosquito species feed on blood, and many mosquitoes primarily feed on nectar or plant juices. However, it's the female mosquitoes of certain species that have adapted to feed on blood to obtain the necessary nutrients for egg development. The act of blood sucking can be a nuisance and a health concern, making mosquito control measures important in regions where mosquito-borne diseases are prevalent. We have come to the end of today's video but before you go, I just want to thank you for watching, I appreciate it and please feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also check out my Instagram link in the bio, for more photos and video clips. This is Animals Facts, see you next time with more facts.